Welcome back to Mic'd Up, Joe Ratty the Natty in the studio. He looks like he's uh, he's running on strictly adrenaline yeah. and uh, coffee. No coffee. No coffee. Strictly adrenaline. Oh, oh. Joe Ratty the Natty has to take it. Right. Yeah, see? He's, There's things you can do when you win the national championship. When you win the national championship. We, we oh, oh, he brought it! There it is! Let's go! Unbelievable! Let's go! I was wondering if they're gonna bring it. Look at that thing! Let's go! It's mobile. Look at that Let's thing! Let's go! It is. Mo- I knew it was gonna be mobile. I knew I you had to. Do. I, had I to. appreciate it. Stopped to the office, made sure. Let's uh. <laughs> per tradition, you know. Oh, which oh you got some more. I had to. I Let's had go! To. The net. The Let's net. go! Net. Let's go! go. We're Dude, gonna put. We're, put we're putting them both in a frame. One says Final Four. One says National Championship. Both in a, in a little. Uh, you want to see what it went? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not after you. Lloyd has had that thing literally up his nostril. Talk to me about it, bro. Like, how, how did it feel, right? Obviously, y'all were in a great city to celebrate in. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of talk. There's been a lot. You know, both teams were very competitive. Both superstars on the teams were very chippy, but not in a disrespectful way that's just right. there's kind of a sportsmanship type of thing yeah you saw what Caitlin Clark did in the final four you see what Angel Reese and the girls do um you know when they won their big games or when they're winning big games what was the vibe like what was the reaction how does it feel to be a national championship and I mean I'd imagine it's just there's gonna be more to come I mean that's how it feels it's, that's how it feels right now feels, yeah oh, oh. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not chugging. I'm not chugging. I'm not chugging. Yeah, okay. um, I give it to you. We got the funnel over here if you need it. But, dude, it feels great. It's I'm unbelievable. It feels great. Um, it's just our theme all year, piece it together. And, like, we did it. We The final puzzle piece um, last night. And, you know, the semifinal game wasn't pretty at all. I mean, we it was ugly. It was chippy. Um, but we made enough plays. And... I think Mulkey's just the greatest. She said it the other night um, after we um, or we were going into the Miami game in Greenville. She goes, guys, I just have a weird feeling if y'all can beat Miami tonight, we will be playing for a national championship. I have no doubt in my mind that whoever we play in that semifinal game, we will beat them and we'll be playing for a national championship. Um, so fast forward to the Natty. Um, it just – all the stars aligned um, on the biggest stage. The viewership numbers were crazy. The arena was sold out, and we didn't start great. I mean, it started on a seven to two or seven to three run. I think uh, we had a couple turnovers. Um, Caitlin Clark hit a deep three early, and um, but that wasn't it. Wasn't the Caitlin Clark show no. that everyone was expecting? Yes, yeah, she had thirty, but in games they were winning this year, she averaged more or she averaged less points in games that they were losing she was scoring more so it's like coaches got so focused on trying to double her triple her let her do her but it's like she's gonna get hers 30 points isn't gonna beat you eight threes isn't gonna beat you i, I mean i don't know if she made a two-point attempt until like the end fourth of the quarter, quarter. In the very end of the game when it yeah. didn't matter like yeah. she hit a bunch of shots but they were well contested um we fouled her a few too many times. Well, I feel like the whistles were a little bullshit sometimes. Yeah. I mean, even on both sides, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like the referees kind of took some of the, I don't want to say the wind out the sails of, of the atmosphere because it, it was still there, but nobody came to watch them, right? They yeah. came to watch Angel Reese, Alexis Morris, and Kaylin Clark, and those girls play. Yeah. But the ticky tack fouls and, like, yeah. honestly, that technical on Kaylin Clark was like, like, let's just. Not mad about it, though. No, of course not. Ooh. Obviously, right? Like that's like yeah. as a fan and someone on the on the other side, like yeah, you like it. But as a non-biased fan, you're like, hey, listen, there's emotions that run high on both sides. Like yeah. you've got to understand that. You have to have some feel as a referee. And, and I thought some of the hand check fouls just you don't need to call that, yeah. right? But the one call that I am glad they made because I had seen it on TikTok, I'd seen it on Twitter. Caitlin kind of hooks with that offhand, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to create space and. Poa sold it really well, but go watch the slow She did hook her. Yeah, but she did hook her. And it's just, like, that's a Steph Curry-esque move. And Caitlin Clark is phenomenal. One of the best I've ever seen play on the women's side. I mean, she is she can score at all three levels, can pass, create for herself, create for others. It's unbelievable. Great off but, the ball. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The way that she comes off screens. That one then, that one with, a, with a Alexis where she went here, came back through yeah. the screen, 
That was very Steph esque, right? Like, but, and the thing is, played it twice. She knows how to read that because yeah. if Lex is going to tag that, then all the screeners are going to do is turn around and screen Lex again. And it's almost like the screener just stands there, and Caitlin's. It's like a read option. Almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was it was fun to be a part of it. Um, it, it still hasn't really sank in. Um, I don't know when it's going to sink in. Um, it's just we were sitting there last night, um, and we get up big. That Jazz hit the, the three right before half, um, banked it in, and we went in the locker room. And the first thing that the coaches talked about is guys. The third quarter. It's the most important. The Tennessee game, that's when the big run happened. We were up 17 against them. Um, and and Bob was – Coach Starkey was like, guys, we got to stay positive. Stay positive with the girls. Let's not bring up any of the Tennessee stuff. Let's not bring up any negative. Positive, positive, positive. So, of course, we go out in the third quarter and do what we normally do and let them get it back to single digits. And, um, <laughs> it doesn't sound like a coach at all. Well, you knew <laughs> – but you knew, like – it's an ash. You knew Iowa was going was gonna to throw their, yeah. their best. They were, were going to make a run. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, you knew. And what had nothing to do – I mean, some things out probably with with, but credit well, them. Like you yeah. knew they were going to make the shot, but credit LSU for coming back, right? Yeah. Because hey, we got your run. We're going to withstand your run, and then we're going to go make ours. Yeah, and it was. I think that it just says a lot about us. There's some other coaches around the country who have tweeted bad things about us all season, who have talked about us, and one of the coaches in the semifinal game called us the find a way to win Tigers. Well. We just found a way to win a natty, so clearly we what did something is right. That, is that an insult? Like, find a way that's, to win. I'm, I'm like, about as the big, the as key it thing about that phrase is the win part. Right? Tell you like, what, if I if I had a team and all they did was found a way to win, I think I'm taking that team. Right? Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't care how yeah. they win. If they uh, just especially keep winning, thirty four and two team to, to <laughs> two, no. two losses. That only lost season. to South Carolina and Tennessee, and scored 102 points in the national championship game. Most ever. Most ever. You, so you talk about them getting back within six or seven. I think it was mm-hmm. in the third. And I feel like, as far as for her willingness to like just start lighting it up and let it go, you haven't really seen it in a number of games. Alexis's performance in the fourth was unreal. She's not getting enough credit for it. Unreal. No. But Magic Johnson did tweet her. That I was saw big. That. Um, I think everyone said it um, going into the Final Four that yeah, Angel's going to be the talk. Um, she's our Angel and Flaje. Those are our superstars from a social media follower standpoint. Um, and then, of course, you had South Carolina with their people, but they lost, so forget about them. <laughs> um, and then you had Caitlin Clark. I mean, that was the big target. It was Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. And then you have Flage as the, the freshman phenom. But Alexis has this kind of side to her. Luther is right. what we that's call her. That's what they her, said on the stage. And that's what she calls herself. Um, and it was Luther that came out in the fourth quarter. And – those mid-range shots, people want to sleep on the mid-range. Um, I love a good mid-range. Very rarely, I don't know if ever a team has won a national championship by shooting threes. Just, right. just living and dying by three. That, because that's what um, basically Iowa does. They don't really shoot mid-range. It's a lot of straight line drives, layups, and post feeds, or it's threes. They're not really mid-range. But a lot of our offense for Alexis is get in that foul line area, create for yourself, and, and get shots up on the rim. And not a lot of them hit the rim. A lot of them are just nothing but net. And um, she's kind of the unsung hero. Like you got. She give... almost had a double double, right? Like yeah. so. The, and I don't mean to cut you off. This kind of going to your point is like, and you said Magic tweeted at her, right? Which he did. Yep. I saw that, right? But Magic, if you watch Magic Johnson play, what he was so good at and what he focused on was, I want to make sure everybody gets theirs. Like that's gonna make us go. Like yep. I'm, I'm not. He's different, but Alexis Clark, man. Clark, Classics, uh, Morris. Uh, Morris may not be the best player yeah. on the team, which I think she is, but she's the most important player on the team, yeah. right? So, hey, I'm going to let everybody get theirs, everybody, let everybody get in rhythm, mm-hmm. and then when I need to, and it happens all the time, I feel like when you watch them, it's like when it needs to, yeah. in the fourth quarter, when things are starting to go one way or the other, she takes over, right? right? And that's a sign of a very good point guard. Yeah, and I think as a senior who's been around for a while and – all year long has talked about how she wants to finish her book, basically, um, that started with her at Baylor. Um, she said it a few weeks ago, I want my senior night to be in Dallas. And then we won the semifinal game. And this was before we knew who we were going to play. And she said, I- I'm changing that. I, I want to cut down a net on, on sa- uh, Sunday night. So um, It didn't matter who y'all played Sunday. The yeah. way y'all shot, y'all were going to beat anybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I truly believe that. Um, we would have had some matchup problems had it been South Carolina, but – 
I think they overlooked Iowa. I really do. Um, but I think it has a lot to do um, with the stage that we were on um, and the girls just will to win. Um, but the other side of it is we had a cupcake non-conference schedule. Um, I guess I, saw I, your post. I just, I, I really think, I mean, we had cupcakes today at the PMAC. It was awesome. They tasted real good with that trophy. A little funfetti um, inside of it. Maybe yeah, a little, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the yellow and purple sprinkles on top. Um, it's just like people have just doubted us all year. And just to take a step back last night um, and watch that confetti fall, just knowing that we were the champions, it's just, it's unbelievable. And kind of rewind to about two minutes left, you look over and it's just a sea of purple and gold. And to see the fans and former players, Simone Augustus, uh-huh. um, you had a number of them. Simone's parents, or Simone's mom was with her. Um, and you just, you're pointing out, all of Mulkey's former players from Baylor. But, I mean, the national media thinks that Mulkey's players, former players don't like her. And that's, that was my point, right? You saw, you see Kim get emotional, right? Yeah. Like she's, this is her fourth national championship that she has won. That's unbelievable. Right? Like, she's done it as a player. She's done it as an assistant coach. She's done it as a uh, head coach yeah. at two different schools. Mm-hmm. And you see the emotion. Obviously, she's from Louisiana. This means a lot to her because it's like her home state. This is what she did. But I feel like there's more to it, right? There's the history that she's had with Alexis. There's all the transfers she's brought in. There's all of the noise that they had to hear throughout the course of the entire season. Like, yeah. all that had to play into that emotion. It's like, what did you – because you've known her for a really long time. What did you feel like when you saw her get emotional and have that type of reaction after winning? Um, <laughs> kind of the same emotions that she had. I was there in 05 in Indianapolis um, when she won her first one. I was there in 12 in Denver when she won the second one, and then I was in Tampa in 19. But that was always from afar. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kramer and I are close, and I, our families have been close, but I don't know what the day-to-day looked like. So being a part of a program that has been through some crazy times this year, um, good, bad, and ugly, um, it all it, it's crazy. It just hits you like a freight train all at once. And – in 19, when she won in Tampa, it came down to the buzzer. I mean, right. Notre, they hit a layup, and then Notre Dame ends up missing a free throw, um, and she ends up winning by one or two points in that national championship game. This one, Kateri hit a huge three. The dagger. The dagger. Um, and Patrick Wright, I, I, it's on my Instagram story right now. Um, it's Patrick Wright's radio call of Kateri hitting the three, and then it goes into that Titanic music. It'll give you chills watching it. But um, when Kateri hit that three – the whole bench started going crazy. Um, I'm literally just standing there with my three up for like 15 seconds. I just did not want to move. The crowd was into it. The fan, like it was just the best atmosphere you could imagine. Um, and then of course you kind of turn and look and Mulkey's doing this number right here, just trying not to cry. And so we sit back down, Iowa goes down. I don't know if they scored or not. Um, I don't think they did, but, um, we get the ball back, and Mulkey gets down in that kind of like squatting pose, and you start to see her tear up. And I kind of look over my shoulder at G, and G's eyes are starting to tear up. And then I was like, it started to hit me like, oh my gosh, we're about to win a national championship. And it takes you back to the long days of October where you're practicing for four hours. It takes you back to September um, when the girls are just starting to get their new gear and break in their shoes for the first time. Um, and then you think back like, oh, we won a tournament in Maui. We won a tournament in the Bahamas. Like all the little places that you've been and on our free smoke tour this year, so to speak, um, it's crazy how your mind works because it all hits you at one time. And it's just these pent up emotions that you can't really control. And by the time the game was over, it was time to celebrate. Like the emotions hit you, you're on the bench the tears are flowing a little bit, but when that final buzzer sounds and there's zeros on the clock, that's when the happy part is. That that's when the work's done. What y'all saying? Breathe and believe. Is that what it says? Breathe and what? Who? Someone said that on an interview. She's like, yeah, Kim would always tell us to to breathe and something. What is it? I think it's breathe, breathe and believe. Breathe she she's, she said a lot of stuff that I just as a coach, it's just she's been in that moment before and she finds ways to motivate kids. Um, and then she jumped Flage's ass in the first quarter. She, I've never seen Mulkey call a timeout two minutes into a game. Even the South Carolina game, it was 18-2 to two before she called a timeout. Yeah. Like, she called a timeout so quick, grabbed Flage, 
And most coaches would just take a freshman out and say the stage is too big, you're not playing tonight. And then what did Flage do? Bald. Yep. Absolutely bald. Locked up on defense, hit some big shots for us, got other people involved, and she rebounded really well. That was the biggest key. Like we knew Angel was going to rebound well. We knew Ladeja would rebound well, but the key was going to be our guards. And then the ticky tack fouls, we get into bad foul trouble. And Jazz comes in, doesn't skip a beat. Poa comes in, doesn't skip a beat. Hits two big threes. Yeah. One should have been a four point play. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then drew some fouls on Caitlin Clark. Um, and you never want to play a team with any weaknesses. Like we didn't yeah. want Caitlin Clark. And and I heard Mulkey tell the ref this. She said no one wants to watch Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark and Alexis Morris sit on the bench. Like, but y'all did that. Y'all are the ones blowing the whistle and calling these ticky tacky fouls. Like. No one wants to watch that. If it's a foul. It's a foul. But like, let's let's let them play a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I guess if you're go- so like going through this whole game, like you said, thinking about at points in the game, you're thinking about the summer and all the stuff that built up to the spot that you are. I can remember. I'm sure he can remember going back to it. Like when you reach that, this it's an emotion. It's a spot that not many people can speak on. But when you reach getting to that final game, where you know at the end of this thing, it will be decided one way or the other, right? And you either the champion or you're just mm-hmm. like the rest of everyone else who played this season, yeah. right? And you get to points in the game. Like you said, you have Jazz doing what she did in the first half. You have the the three ball that goes in at the buzzer at the end of the first half. Mm-hmm. Controlling those emotions going into the halftime, knowing like there's still another half to play. But my God, if I could have written a better script for where we are right now and what we're about to do, what we have the opportunity to do, how cool is that feeling of knowing, like, we don't have much left, but it feels like it's so far away? Yeah, it was – and we said that in the locker room um, going into halftime. Where It was a long walk from – so Jazz hits the three at the buzzer. Um, we're all sprinting off the court, running in the tunnel, celebrating, whatever. And once we get in the tunnel, you got to walk – it's an NBA arena, so you got to walk a long way and then take a left and walk down a long hallway. And that the, the walk itself felt like – a mile and you're like we can't get to the locker room quick enough but it's almost like you want halftime to just hurry up and be over yeah. with mm-hmm. so you can get back on the court um and it just, we just kept saying 20 more minutes 20 more minutes um but those 20 more minutes just couldn't go by fast enough yeah. and i kept looking at g and i'm like that clock's not moving fast enough that clock's not moving <laughs> and and then alexis being the senior she is uh in the fourth quarter she got that 10 second violation but i knew what she was doing she knew that if we milked that clock, mm-hmm. you can limit the number of possessions that I was going to get. And we held Iowa on a lot of possessions to one shot. So Alexis was being smart. Now, I wish she would have gotten the ball across half court. But um, that just shows the knowledge. And it's what Kim has been preaching all year. I need a general on the floor that thinks the way I think as a coach. And that's why Kim is such a good coach is because she played the position, the most important position on the court. She was the quarterback and she yeah. was the point guard. Like that's, you need someone like that on the court. Um, and it's, it's been a big step for Alexis um, this year to, to rise to the occasion and take over when she needs to take over. I, uh, and I, I'm going to say this. I don't want to say this in a, in a, to make this sound weird, but I felt like watching the game, it looked like, Y'all became a complete team this game, right? And let me explain why I'm mm-hmm. saying this, right? Like, obviously, the game went through Alexis and Angel for the majority of the year. Angel reset the record for most double doubles. That's what happened. You had some very talented players around them that they were kind of up and down throughout the course of the year. Well, you go through this game and you have uh, um, 21 parts Carson. Yeah. She scores 21, 7 for 7 in the first half, yeah. right? Then you get to halftime. Your two top players, who I just said, Alexis Morris and Angel Reese, not on the court. Right. Don't play in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. Barely play. Yeah. I don't think they play. Do they play? Not much. I don't, I don't even know if they got in the game. But then you have all – everyone else steps up, right? Ladeja starts scoring. You have Fl- – Flage starts scoring. You have – Kateri. Kateri starts yeah. scoring. Poe starts scoring. Like, you have all these players that are starting to kind of come into their own – and start doing – everybody's making shots. Yeah. And everybody's picking up. And for me, like that going into next year mm-hmm. is huge because you are – you're not going to have Alexis back. Like mm-hmm. Angel is going gonna, is gonna to be back. Yeah. But this allows the team to be a lot more complete, I feel like, moving forward, especially with the confidence. Yeah, and, and you always want to peak at the end of your season. You want to be playing your best basketball at the end of the year. Um, but it just goes back to how wise Coach Starkey and Coach Mulkey are. 
piece it together. Like I said, has been our theme all year. We wear it on our wristbands every day. Um, Coach makes the girls wear wristbands during practice to say it, so it's a constant reminder. Um, and we needed every piece last night. We needed Jazz. We needed Poe. We needed KP. I mean, hell, we needed the bench energy because most of the time when a girl on our team gets subbed out, they don't want to hear from an assistant coach. But to have the end of your bench picking your teammates up, like, hey, you're good. You're going back in, quick blow, whatever. Like, you're fine. That, But you needed every single person on that bench um, and on the court last night to play their role. And um, we knew going into the game that we were going to have to make shots to stay in it. Uh, Iowa does not play great defense. They really don't play defense at all. I mean, it was – I'm I'm just baffled that South Carolina didn't beat them. Shocked. Caitlin Clark had a great game, and it was unbelievable to watch and be a fan um, of women's basketball that night. But, I mean, what got us the national championship game was defense and rebounding. What, we gave up 85 points last night, but who cares? We made shots. Right. So Something had to give. Something definitely had to give. So, here's the thing. There, LSU has, has had some very – very, very historic players, not only in college basketball, but they've gone on to have very historic careers in the WNBA as yep. well. Mulkey comes here year two. It's been very, very quiet, right? But she's had a Jordan-esque career when it comes to getting two championship games. She's four for four. Never lost in an Why area. is she so good in those situations? Because competitors don't shy away from the bright lights. And... She's been there as a player on the college level. She's been there as a player in the Olympics. She's been there as an assistant coach under one of the best to ever do it and Leon Barmore. She's been there, um, played for Pat Summit. Really five for five, honestly, because the player side yeah. of the team. I mean, she's learned from the absolute best in the game, and she doesn't shy away from the moment. And I just I had such a good feeling, just everything leading up to it. She's the type of coach – that she put it in the girls' hands on Saturday. Saturday night, we had a huge pep rally um, at the hotel. It was packed. Fans going crazy. Gritty, and we had boozy, set it off like nuts at the hotel. We refocused. We went back to our meeting room to watch some film, and she said, guys, 7.45 is the only time we can get on the court tomorrow. Normally, if we have a 2.30 game, hell no, we're not doing shoot-around. All the girls said, no, we've been doing it all postseason. We're having shoot-around. So we woke up, had breakfast at 6.30, and we went to shoot-around, Stuck with the routine, but it was completely up to the girls. Mulkey said, I'm not telling y'all we have to go to shoot around. If it were up to me, we can sleep in, rest our legs. And the girls were like, no, we're, we're doing it. We want to walk through their inbounds. We want to go over their plays. And we want to get shots up on the main floor. Iowa didn't even, I don't think Iowa even practiced on Saturday and they didn't use their shoot around on Sunday. So there's something to be said about the grittiness and the toughness. And it, it it's hilarious. And Mulkey will come out with this probably and Angel will say it. Um, before our Michigan game, after we beat Hawaii, we have girls on our team complaining that their legs are tired, that their legs are dead. Mulkey walks out of practice. This is the day of the Michigan game. We have shoot around. <laughs> Mulkey leaves shoot around. Kicks all the coaches out. Said, "Coaches, locker room. We're done. We're not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing it today." Well, the girls stayed out on the court, and they led their own shoot around. And to see that leadership from Alexis, from Angel, their legs weren't tired. It's a mindset, right? I mean. You had kids that were just pumping fluids into their bodies on Saturday night and, and the early hours of the morning on Sunday getting ready for the national championship. And the scenes and the pictures, like, it's, it's going to be all over social media, but it's just unbelievable what our girls, and I'm going to read you the text that um, Kramer sent me last night because he hit it nail on the head um, talking about what our team has done this year. Because um, it, it, it truly is special. He said, um, oh, boy, here we go. Oh, you lost in the sauce. Um, hold on, here we go, here we go. Imagine a lot of text when you don't sleep for three days. I had yeah. 384 after the game. <laughs> he said, um, he said, y'all literally just changed women's basketball forever. It's bigger than it's ever been because of the Final Four and the players that were on that stage. And I responded. No doubt. I, I responded, we just want a natty. Yeah. And he said, yep. No like, doubt. Y'all just changed it because no of the personalities we have. We got off the bus the day of the game, and we always ride the bus up to the arena. We have a hype video that plays inside the bus, uh, not the ones on social media. I mean, this one's strictly for the girls and the coaches, like hype video, get them ready with music. Um, 
and you pulled up to the American Airlines Arena, like right where the Dirk Nowinski statue is, they had a red carpet from the street all the way up to the front of the arena. And there were probably 10,000 people there just yeah. looking to take pictures, sign autographs. And in that moment, like most people would kind of shy away from it. But when you've got a Flage Johnson who's performed and rapped on big stages, when you've got an Angel Reese who doesn't care about how big the moment is, Alexis Moore, like our girls embraced the hell out of that and loved every second. That's of it. a credit to Kim because she allowed them to do that. Exactly. She empowered them to say, hey, this is your personality. This is who you are. Yeah. Be you. Yeah. Allow yourself to be you, and that's what is going to allow you to be the best player that you are. And I think that's a lot of guys, we've talked about it here. A lot of coaches don't do that. No, I mean, right? a lot of coaches try to make you somebody who they want you to be, as opposed to hey, this is how you are. I understand how I'm going to take your personality, understand how your personality is, and learn how to coach that personality. Can we like show this picture on there? No, oh, absolutely. Your personality and like who you are, not only as a person but as a player, right? right. Like. I, th I think that's one of the big things that, that kind of gets lost in coaching is you get so in your mind of wanting such and such player to be such and such a way. Hey, recruit the players that you know are the type of players you want, and then you go let them be them. Right. That's how you get the most out of them. Right. You know? Right. No doubt. I mean, yeah. just just seeing our girls. I don't know if y'all can see this. Oh, no. Look, 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 look. Zoom it in. Can we? Can you send that to? He can. I mean, look at these. Look at this camera work. Look at that. Oh. Oh, what is? Like, damn. That's, that's insane. Wild. It's insane. That's that, walking in. Yeah. That went from the street all the way up to the steps, of America. That's Airlines sick. And wrapped around the corner, like it was wild. That's sick. But our girls loved it. They embraced it, and the fans there, whether it was Iowa fans, whether it was South Carolina fans, whether it was LSU fans. And before that, we had a send-off at our hotel with all LSU fans. And that's the next thing that I, I mean, I've come on here all year, talked about the fan support. Seeing the purple and gold in Dallas this weekend, um, even with a huge baseball series going on. Uh, They're watching just, the game at the baseball game. Unbelievable. It, it gave awesome. me chills. We, we got on the bus after we beat Virginia Tech, and I'm showing Mulkey um, the videos from baseball, and she's like crying. She's like, this is, this is absolutely yeah. crazy. So, obviously, enjoy this win, right? Like, yeah. enjoy, soak this in. It's national championship. Like, you have season's over. Yeah. You have the ability to enjoy it for a little while. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, and I'm sure Kim's already thinking about what's next, all right? Who do we have coming in next? What are we going to – how do we do this again? Looking at the recruits that y'all are bringing in, looking at the girls that you have coming back that have gotten this experience already, Yeah. this is just the beginning, it feels like. That's the scary part. And the really because you cool came on here and said next year before the season started at the beginning of the season you're like hey multiple times they're gonna be we're gonna be really good this year we have a chance next year though yeah. and now okay we all want it so now next year like holy crap yeah I mean it's so hard you have Hall of Fame coaches who have coached 30, 40 years who never make it to a Final Four never get a chance to play in a national championship and the fact that these kids this year got to not only play in a Final Four but win a national championship that experience in and of itself is going to give them the ability to take big strides this summer. And then once our recruits get here in the fall or late summer, they're going to push our, our current players will push those younger kids. Like this is what it takes to get to that point. The best part about that, three of our four signees were at the semifinal game. They were selected to play in an all-star game in Dallas um, on awesome. on Sat or on yeah Friday or Saturday, so they came to our semifinal game, and to see them not only watch us play but just be there in the atmosphere and watch the South Carolina uh, Iowa game after our game and be able to interact with our fans and our players like they're part of the family. Once you sign that that letter of intent and the three letters LSU across your chest, like that sticks with you for a long time, and I think. Even if even those even though the Michaela and Angelica and Aaliyah didn't step foot on the court, just them being there and in, in that atmosphere allowed them to say, "Hey, like this is where we want to go. Like this is, is this Kim, is big." Is Kim Mulkey the greatest women's basketball coach of all time? Well, you got Gino. She's up there. I mean, Gino's one eleven. Yeah, at the same school though. My whole point is, Kim's done it three different places. She's, She's won as a player. 
She's won as she's won multiple as a head coach. She came to a school that had single digit wins two years ago. Took them to the tournament. Had twenty five wins last year. Took them to in their second year. Won the whole thing. Right. I get it. Gino's got eleven. Great. Yeah. I understand the amount, but how she's done it, where she's done it, and changing and the, the manner, game of yeah. women's basketball. Yes. Now Gino changed it. Yeah. For sure. He made it, and then I think LSU, and I think what Kim's doing is kind of taking it to the next level. Yeah. As far as popularity it's, goes, she's got to be. I mean, she's she's on. If you, had to, list, Mount, if you had to have a Mount, if you had to have a Mount Rushmore, she's on that Mount Rushmore. No doubt. She, I mean, I think you've got three up there with Gino, Pat, and Kim. Crazy. I mean, Kim Mulkey Court. It's hard, it's hard to, uh, it's hard Kim, to argue. Kim Mulkey that. Court. But I mean, but that school in Waco wouldn't put anything on the court for. Her. We're, we're we're very happy they didn't put anything. Yeah, now we can do. That's all it took. Good. I think I think she's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, because to have the guts to leave a university that you spent 21 years at, built a dynasty there, won three national championships at, had all the All Americans. I mean, she's eight wins away from 800 uh, from 700. She's at 692 wins. Think about that. Mm-hmm. She's sixty, I think sixty and eight. Is that right? Twenty or thirty four and two this year, and twenty six and six last year. She's sixty and eight in two years. They won nine ball games before That's we got point. here. That That's doesn't point. just happen, right? You can bring in the best of the best players, but there's something to be said about they coaching. gotta buy in. They gotta buy in. And Play they defense. Weren't, they weren't just new players. Like she brought in all the. They weren't just players that were there. They're all new players. Yeah. Nine new players that came in. They were talking about on ESPN last night how great she has been. Talked a lot on ESPN last night. Yeah, I, it, it. You know, it's bad. Not bad, but like when you get to the hotel and you're just in your room and you've watched the same segment like four times. That's how you know. And and that's my one of my favorite things because I remember in 2005 when she won her first national championship, we were all up and she had a huge suite um, on the top floor of some hotel in Indianapolis, and Kramer and I were just sitting in there watching ESPN just roll through, and then the top ten comes on, and then. 45 minutes later, the top 10's on again. I'm like, I've already seen it. it, But it gets better and better. And then they kept showing the Angel and Caitlin Clark stuff last night, just going at it. And then it gets early enough in the morning. It's 7 a.m., so they finally have the first segment of the day. um, And people have their takes on it. And then you get on Twitter, and you're reading all about it. But Mulkey's ability to block out the noise and let her younger coaches, let her players do all the talking, she backs it up by winning and getting them to buy in. I love it. I know you're tired. I know you're exhausted. I'm good. So we're gonna take a break. All right. We're gonna let you go. I want to take a picture with that thing. Yeah, absolutely. We're all taking the squad's taking a picture yeah, with it, no to. doubt. Got to. Um dude, appreciate it. Dude, Unofficial, hey, official hype man of women's. We talked this thing in the into We into did talk we did. Every we Monday, talked hey, this. don't say maybe might now nah, you're coming back. This Monday. turned into Jay Johnson and Joe Ratty the Mondays, Natty yes. Mondays. Yeah, I mean we can we can change that text up there to Joe Natty if you want. There you go. Joe Natty. Joe Natty. Joe Natty. Oh Not God. ratty. He's natty. Bags, these bags under my eyes. Right? Ratty the natty. Man. Hey, you deserve them. Those bag, are well dude. earned bags. That's <laughs> all right. I'll get. I'll get a lot of sleep coming up. No it's, doubt. It's gonna be a fun couple of weeks. We've got a lot planned. Yeah, we got. We got the. Oh, uh, parade got on Wednesday. Parade. Yeah, it's about parade to say. on you don't Wednesday. Don't get to sleep yet. Um, it's gonna be crazy too. Um, I know Johnny and Jordan um had a meeting today. Um, I'm not sure all the details. It'll probably be out all over social media tomorrow. Um, I think it's at six or six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty. It's a parade in my city, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boosie will probably be there. Shaq might be at their booth. How great was Boosie cutting great. the nets down? <laughs> I know. Oh, it was great. I mean, that how great was, great was it that uh, Flage's music was playing? Dude, crazy. Like, like, and, Sick. And the one thing, and I was talking to Flage's mom the other night throughout the whole recruiting process, the biggest reason, and this goes back to why Kim's the best to ever do it, Kim never once said Flage couldn't be a rapper right. and play basketball at the same time. And... A lot of other coaches said, well, she's going to have to choose. Flage is the type of kid that will get up at 5 a.m. and write music, go to the studio, record, go to study hall, go to class, get lunch on her own, and then come to practice. As long as you can have your responsibilities and understand what the priorities are, understand what you – if you can do it all, great. For what? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, what are you telling me? Like, I can't have something else that I'm passionate about while I'm playing the sport? That's ridiculous. Honestly, I think it's better to have something that you're passionate about to take your mind off the game. Thank you. Something to escape from. Something to actually go and and do something else. She's always said it. She said basketball is what she does. She said music is her therapy. Like, 
she yeah. plays basketball, but music is no what keeps her sane. Like she she loves it, yeah, and she's no very very talented. You have to feel for Iowa too. We're going into that, we're like they have Flaugier's music playing. Like this is a whole different animal we're about to walk into. It's it's crazy when you feel like the I mean the absolute swag that LSU basketball brings. Mm-hmm. Where it's we haven't faced anybody like this in the country. No, and then you saw it happen. It manifested itself on the court. Yeah, no doubt. It just we we well, the first show I came to I guess was right before Bama. Yep. It's crazy. Yep, crazy. Big Here good we run. Are. Pretty great good run. run. Great pretty run. Great run, run for first, the uh, for, first championship you know. I've ever won. I, there you go. Uh, I Enjoy lost, it. Soak lost it in. in two state championships in high school. Lost in the semis in one, um, and then lost in regionals in high school. So soak it up. Yeah. What Enjoy been, every been, single been, second of it. I'm not that old. No, I was just wondering. I didn't know. I mean, that's the last. But it, it was nice to hear from from some <laughs> of my old. my coaches, uh, former college coaches, and um, former teammates. Um, so it's gonna yeah. be fun on uh, Friday. We're going to the Pelicans game, and I'll have two teammates. Um, one plays for the Knicks, one plays for the Pels. Jackson Hayes and Jericho Sims, and then one of my favorite GAs of all time. Um, he's on staff with the Knicks. So nice, um, nice. Are the Pels gonna make the playoffs? I haven't even paid. They're, they're, they are uh, tied. They're in a seventh. four-way tie right now for seventh. So they yeah, they're forty and thirty-eight. And okay. supposed to come back soon. Yeah, so I mean they have a shot. Yeah, another two weeks. Um, all right, we're gonna take a minute break. We're gonna get all these the pick the photo shoot with yeah. the boys. Uh, you're what? Appreciate you coming on as always. Awesome. We're still I might, gonna have you. I might, I might have to join you at the box. Now, come now on. I like turn into a huge baseball yep. fan. Yep. It's baseball season now. Baseball season now. We we got to the very last day that we could. Yep. And that was the other thing. Last thing I'll say, and then we'll move on. Uh, hearing Coach Mulkey on that morning that we decided to have shoot around, just talk to the seniors and just put it all into perspective. Win or lose. That was the last possible day that they could have played. Yep. The women's NIT yeah. was over. Love that. The other tournament was over. And when we huddled up at shoot around, because there's only about 30 players, say the average team has 15 on each squad, 30 players get to play on that last day. Not many teams have a bunch of seniors anymore. We have a transfer portal, all that. Um, and so Ladeja, Alexis, Jasmine, and Emily, she's like, guys, this is the last time that y'all will wear the LSU jersey, win or lose, and y'all are doing it on the biggest stage, national championship. So it was fun, um, and I'm excited to see what those seniors are going to do after this. Did, did Anthony throw game three? No. Who threw game three against Texas? He did throw game three. So I, the reason that you're saying that, it, like, it kind of gave me chills because I can remember Paul at that time. He was like, if I told you – that you were going to get to play on the absolute last game of the season and mm-hmm. we'd have Anthony Renato on the mile. Would you take it? Would you take it? Yeah. And we're all like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> game. <laughs> what do you mean? We win it right there. Yep. Y'all got to do that. It's pretty Y'all cool. got to do it. It's pretty cool. And it's special as a coach, too, because like Coach G, um, he had never mm-hmm. been to an NCAA tournament before this year. And Coach Mulkey promised him when he got to LSU that he would win a national championship. Oof. The other story, last one, and Coach Starkey told me this before, the, or after the game last night. He said when he got hired at LSU, he was moving all his stuff in. Um, he had he has so much memorabilia in his office because he's been to so many Final Four, whatever. He has his box of rings and Final Four from 04, 05, 06, 07, whatever. And Coach Mulkey's mom was in the office one day. And she was, if you know Grand, she was just kind of going through all Bob's stuff, looking at everything. And Coach Bob goes, Grand? Or Miss Drew, there's one missing, a national championship ring. And Drew puts her hands on Bob's shoulder and goes, don't worry, you're at the right place. You'll get one. Love so, that. Love that. Grand love new. That. I didn't think it was going to happen this quick, but. It's called yeah, return um, on investment right there. Mm-hmm. Quick. Right. Stock is booming. Stock yeah. is up. <laughs> um, all right, let's take this break. Let's get all these pictures taken so that I can get you out here so you can go take a big old nap. <laughs> 